continuing on with the 1960 Olympic I'm not sure I want to give up on it yet uh, this vertical circuit is fairly simple and we should be able to fix this and have it work right and I don't understand what I'm missing um, that's throwing me off so hard because I've fixed hundreds of these and you know why I'm stuck on this one is a bit of a mystery so we started out with this capacitor here was leaky and was over was positive biasing this tube and then I changed this capacitor these two and this one so I've done all five of these I mean that's pretty much the whole circuit I've checked um, all the resistors they're all good now the interesting thing about this 6cm7 is I had about eight of these all used and what I did is I kept changing them around and some of them would start rolling after two or three minutes of operation some of them would never stop rolling and then I found one that worked well I went last night I went after I captured the commercials and I tested all those tubes and they all test good except one of them was weak so I think what I did is I ordered a couple of these these 6 cm7s these are cheap tubes these are like a dollar or something a couple dollars a piece with shipping I mean they're cheap so I'm I've ordered some brand new old stock ones of those so we're gonna try that I'm pretty sure it's not the tube um, I'm sort of curious about this capacitor right here this 0.15 and I'm also kind of curious, this thing gets its, its B plus, or it gets its power from the 510 volt boost, which comes down here, and it's coming off the flyback right there. And of course, this is your boost filter capacitor right here, this 0.1. And these are notorious for leaking and shorting and causing no high voltage. Now, I don't know, I never measured this point right here which maybe I should have done but um, maybe I could do that right now just measure and see what the boost voltage is so I'm interested in this I'm also curious maybe somebody replaced the yoke when they changed the CRT or maybe the yoke was changed and they didn't quite have the right one so they just stuck something in there and maybe that's what I'm fighting maybe I'm fighting um, a wrong part which would be very hard to identify unless there's part numbers on everything the vertical output transformer maybe someone just replaced it whoever's mobile TV service just replaced it with something they had on the truck and the same thing with the yoke I'm also interested in maybe checking these two resistors in the yoke 68 and 69 I thought those were to damp and ringing but I don't know if one of them was open or if one of them had gone way down and way down in value maybe so I think we got some work to do and I, I think this is worth pursuing I know some people like these longer detailed videos and I like to get to the bottom of this stuff it's always a learning experience um, we probably definitely have this is probably leaky and this is probably leaky the inside these couplets this these should be disc capacitors not that they're not bad but they don't really get leaky and there's several of those couplets in this set now as far as the audio goes uh, I don't see these are all disc capacitors so we might have a shorted 6 CU5 that's very possible might have a bad 6DT6. Uh, any, anything here can cause that. Probably the best interesting that they're getting the 135 volt source out of the audio output tube. So maybe we want to check. We want to check our voltages on this tube. That would be an easy thing to do right now. Check these voltages, check the boost, 
And then what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to pull the chassis. I'm going to take it by a friend's shop and blow it out. Blow all those roaches out of it. Because those are... I don't like roaches. Um, roaches, you know, you get the seeds in your house and you get roaches in your house. And the only way to really get rid of roaches is to tint the house like termite tint the house except tint it for bed bugs where they put more gas in it and leave it on for an extra day that's the only sure-fired way to get rid of all the roaches and roach seeds okay they said the boost was supposed to be 510 it's 512 it's almost right on 510 there you go and dropping Okay, let's check the audio output. Pin one, which is a cathode, they want 135 volts there. We have 128. This is interesting, pin two and five, they want 6.5 volts there, got 115. But that's not the same as this right here. Two and five are not tied together on the chassis. My apologies, 2 and 5 are tied together inside the tube, so yes, they are the same. Pin 7 is supposed to be 105, and it's 235. What's going on here? 6 is supposed to be 115, and it's 247. What the hell is... Okay, I'm being stupid again. Uh, you always read your footnotes, and the little square means measured from the 135 source. So we want to use pin 1 as the ground. Okay, so that's a little better. On pin 2 and 5, we have 7.3 volts. Pin 6, we have 118. So interesting, they're all within 3 volts now. Uh, I'm being stupid again. So wonder what's going on there. I guess we could check the detector. I think that's this one. Back on the vertical, I should have 1.5 volts on pin 9. I have 3 volts, which would indicate that the tube is, you know, got twice the current flowing through it than it should. That's why it's getting so hot. Pin 8, they want negative 25 volts. I have negative 13. So it's like something is overloading the hell out of this thing. So I don't know. I'm going to have to pull this chassis out and clean it and then play with it and see if I can figure out why the vertical circuit is so jacked up. Maybe once I get it out and get it clean, something will be apparent to me that some part was vertical output transformer or something was replaced with something that uh, whoever's TV had on the van that day. <laughs> I'm going to use the paintbrush and clean it up. After cleaning the chassis, I verified that the vertical output transformer is the right one. It is the factory, unchanged. I'm going through double checking all the capacitors. A lot of them are very lossy and leaky. You can see this is the maximum eye opening I get on this one. And if I go to 450 volts, it is slightly leaky. Um, this one right here, the original one we changed, is very leaky. At 50 volts, it closes the eye. So I'm just still plugging away, checking the resistors, double checking all the capacitors. This one here was okay. This one was okay, but a lot of these other ones were slightly leaky and out of tolerance and lossy. Checking the capacitor that's in parallel with the secondary of the vertical output, it tests okay. It's not great, but it's not bad.
So I took the yoke off and got it all cleaned up and this is a replacement Y16. This is an approved replacement. And I was wondering if those resistors might be bad, but I don't think that's the case. I'm gonna try and ring test this. Obviously you can tell another shop soldered this in here by how sloppy the solders are. This could very well be the problem. Uh, unfortunately, I have nothing to check it against. The resistance ohms out okay, so I don't see a problem there, but yeah, it's a Y16. You look at the yoke here, Y16 is a is an approved replacement with a footnote of one which is connect is same as original. So yeah, that's a, an approved replacement yoke. Well, on both sides, I'm getting zero rings. So obviously those dampening resistors, I gotta cut those out of there because like I said, both of them, the horizontal shows some rings, but not the vertical. I cut the resistors out on both sides. So on this side, eight rings. Don't pay attention to it saying bad. This is really for low impedance solid state stuff. On this side, eight rings. So I don't think it's a short in the yoke. I'm gonna measure the resistors. Both resistors are measuring right on 500 ohms. A Little bit low, but uh, tolerable, so it's I don't think it's the yoke. I think it's the vertical output transformer. See this is a Sprague quick at and that's these are exactly what this is for. You cut it and then you use the coil to create a mechanical connection to splice it back together. I make my own by wrapping just some wire around a paper clip. So now I'll solder them and they create an actual mechanical connection. And then here's what they look like soldered. I got the vertical output transformer disconnected. And um, 70 milliamps on this one. And uh, this is not the exact same thing, but I get a different reading. On this one, I only get 24 milliamps. So maybe there are some shorted turns in that transformer. Believe it or not, I managed to find both the transformer and the yoke, but I'm leaning more towards the transformer because the, both sides of the yoke showed even comparing them. Uh, let's do some testing between this transformer and the transformer on the chassis. I got the transformer that's on the chassis pulled out of circuit. I got one lead of the primary and one lead of the secondary lifted. Okay, on ring test, on the new transformer, I get five rings on the primary. What's interesting, if I short the secondary, I go up to 11 rings. On the transformer in the set, I get five rings, which is the same. If I short the secondary on this transformer, it does not change. Okay, let's do current test. Okay, keep in mind that this device is for low impedance solid state equipment. Um, but just com to compare, because I'm feeding this 15 kilohertz, feeding it into the primary, I'm sorry, the secondary feeding it into the secondary. I've been feeding everything into the secondary, nothing onto the primary. Feeding into the secondary, I get 70 milliamps. Feeding into the secondary of the new transformer, 13 milliamps. So 70 milliamps, and it's this thing says AC load on this one, 13 milliamps on this one. That would suggest that there are in fact shorted turns in the old transformer. But again, I don't know, this, this thing is not really for this. Now this is interesting, if on this one, if I short the primary, the primary is the high impedance side, so I'm feeding the thing backwards. So if I short this, it's really hard to do with one hand, but if I short this, so if I short the secondary on this one, 
I get 60 milliamps AC load. So it's almost like the primary is almost shorted, already shorted on this transformer. So this is, gets real interesting. So I have 77 milliamps on this one. If I short the sec, if I short the primary, it goes down. That's disconnected. That is shorted. I'm I'm betting I'm betting right now that this has got shorted windings in it. I'll start by putting this all back together and getting it working the way it was, and I'll start changing parts so we can compare. So here we have three brand new tubes. 6 CM6. I found a wire, a nice test wire to go from the RCA speaker output to the speaker down below. We have our replacement uh, vertical output transformer. We have the original yoke. Original yoke here. Be very gentle with the yoke. We have a replacement yoke here. And I dug out the audio tubes. So those are here, the demodulator. Unfortunately, this yoke, the plastic, is disintegrating, but we can still do testing on it. And then we got our miscellaneous crap here. And that's it. Let me put it back together and get it working the way it was. Let's we'll start by removing this spring-loaded thing here and then let me get the yoke back on. You always got to make sure you get your CRT ground wire on. That The CRT ground wire is as important as the high voltage here. That ground is the ground for this high voltage. So we just pop this back in. Okay. I'm not putting the back on the yoke yet because it fits very tight and this this is loose. And I'm worried about breaking the wires inside there. Okay, so the first thing I gotta do is I gotta get it adjusted all back to working because it was It was uh, torco-corculated from me screwing with all the controls, testing everything. Let me see. Okay, so that, that affects the top. The hell, it almost looks good now, like it's working. Did I fix it? It's cute. What the? Hold on. It looks good now. So I don't get it. I don't get it. I know it's working perfect now with the original tube. And I have more than enough deflection on the bottom. And I have none of the fold over. It's working right now. See, that's the top, that's, and before I had that turned all the way to one side, and it was maxed out. I only changed one capacitor, and now I have more than enough deflection at the bottom, so I'm not, and the vertical, the vertical hold is in the middle now. The only problem is I have bigger spacing here than I do at the top and bottom, but it's still, it's still excellent for what compared to what it was and my cathode voltage is 1.8 volts which is supposed to be 1.5 but considering the 100 ohm resistor has drifted up 30 ohms that's probably very close the only thing I did is replace this blue capacitor uh, with a different one 
I mean, I had a .1 in there before, and I just changed it to a different .1. That's all I've done besides testing. Here's a capacitor I had in there. I'm going to have to put this back. I know that sometimes low frequencies don't work good with disc capacitors, but I can't believe. i got to change it back. Okay, I put the disc capacitor back in, and it's working just fine now. What the hell is going on with this? It fixed itself just by me threatening to spend money on it. I didn't do anything to it except clean the roaches off of it and do a bunch of testing. I didn't do anything to it. Oh, I reinstalled that capacitor, but I didn't, that one tested good, but I didn't change anything until, I didn't change that. You know, it was working with the old one. I changed it because I thought maybe it was screwing it up. So I don't know what's up with this. I decided since I dug it out to substitute in our replacement vertical output transformer. And uh, it's, let me let me adjust it. It's a little jacked up here. So now it's back to working jacked up again with the new vertical output transformer and the cathode voltage is back up to 2.5. What the hell? I don't know. This is a trip. So I went back to the other transformer and it was working right again. Then I go back to the new one and it's not working right. Is it the lead length that's causing a problem? Is it is it these long leads that's causing the problem? Is it um what the hell is it? Is it are are the waters do, do the transformers have moisture in them? Is that what's going on? Is the one that's in there was it damp? And because I had it the chassis out in a dry area, it dried out over the the past few days because you know these are paper the insulation in these things is paper so if this was to get waterlogged it might affect the way it works I'm not a hundred percent sure on that but it, it sure seems like I, I, I just don't know because now this one's compressed at the bottom so it's either the transformer, the lead length, or this new transformer's got water in it. Maybe I'll try this new transformer with a new tube. Okay, so the new transformer and the new tube gives us full deflection, although the linearity is not as good as with the old transformer. And we have the lowest cathode current with this combination. And the tube is much cooler than when we started. The tube barely doesn't cause my gloves to start smoking. I'm sort of slowly reversing everything I've done. Um, I removed this capacitor and went back to the original. The original tested pretty good. So now all I've done is change three capacitors here. I'm pretty sure that the problem is that this paper was moist, damp. Because where I had the TV stored, it's been very damp. So I'm thinking I might have got impatient. I might have just needed to let the TV run for several hours and dry out. You know, this one is probably the same thing. The paper is probably very damp. Because there's a layer of paper between each winding. It's like, it's like they go across with coil, then they lay a piece of paper across with a coil piece of paper so this thing these things almost are like a capacitor in a way they just don't have foil they have you know coils of wire so I bet I could eliminate uh, all the capacitors except the blue one and it would work just fine yeah I think I just got impatient with this should have let it run and bake and dry out for a while okay See if we get any different response. This is the detector. Uh, 
too, but the audio detector. Let's change this. Can't do this one-handed. See if this one sounds any different. God, that one's even quieter. Uh, we gonna have to play this audio, this game with the audio output to audio section now of it working and then not working and then working on its own. Yeah, that one's definitely louder. Okay, let's try the 6AW8. I love how I just yank these while it's live. Where's the... Can't do this. Sockets are tight. I would think this thing should be blaring loud. Should be a hell of a lot louder than that. I mean, the volume is almost all the way up. It should be vibrating the damn speaker apart. Let's try to change the audio output tube, even though I think it's good. Okay, let's try and work this sound issue out. If I can get my neck decollete here. Circle HSN. Everything logical. At, uh, has a very, very kind of pretty um, base color there. So it's like a beige and a white. Fewer than 1700 to go around. In okay, uh, it should be blaring loud. I got the volume all the way up. Now 500 left. Um, a very upscale looking feel. Oh, yes. Get my neck decollete and Okay, that's a brand new audio output tube. that cat, she's famous. Wow, is that sucker hot? Wow. It, remember, it's used to supply power to the IF, so let's try this. Then I found a new 6DT6, brand new, old stock. That's the demod tube down here. Waiting for this neck decollete to warm up. It is up. our fancy Lumi Lux Compact LED mirror. Now, it not only has 10 times magnification, but it's got a rechargeable light in there that either gives you the cool, bright daylight or a soft white light and to fitness item. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go to the new 6DT6. Uh, the used one I put in there didn't seem to work as good as the one that was in there. The best way to do these tubes is to substitute them. I mean, yeah, I can test them, but what what good is that going to do? You know, if I can substitute it, then we know a hundred percent that it's. Okay, so is the new old stock one dead? Jeez. Let's 
It's the right tube, right? 6DT6. Okay, so why is... Why is the new 6DT6 not nearly as loud as the old one? Better check the voltages on this thing. I don't understand that. This thing's. Yes. Let me try changing this one again. And then we'll check the voltages on the 6DT6. Try to figure out how to get this in the hole. Okay, that's the original 6AW8. This is the amp. Isn't it great that you can get a full range of motion for your hips, your thighs, and your buttocks? This is easy on the body. Plus, you'll feel it all the way in the inner thighs, the outer thighs. Let's check the voltages the on this. Five should be 105. It's measuring 99. Six should be 100. It's measuring 102. Two should be... Um, Pin 2 should be 2 volts, it's 1.78. Almost seems like this resistor has gone up in value. Maybe I should tweak this. Try tweaking this. Let's watch this plate voltage and change to the new tube. Yeah, it's lower with the new tube because the new tube is conducting harder. Well, let's, let's see what the cathode is. It's probably higher. Yeah, 1.9. So the newer tube is conducting harder. I wonder if that open resistor or that resistor has gone up in value. That's why the old tube works better. But let's try tweakificating this sound trap. Waterproof, transferred, sweatproof. It will not come off. It will not be orange. It will not be glittery. It looks natural. And walk you me through the shade it. charts. Yeah, so tell me decide on which color to choose. It's so easy to choose the shade, and you can't go wrong. We have light radiance for those of fair, porcelain skin tones that burn easily. Then we have warm, which is a step up from light. Natural radiance, which is what I like to wear in the winter time, which is for light to medium skin tones that do stand is what I have on, and that's what you saw on Jill. That's for medium to tan skin tones, or if you have lighter skin tones and you want a boost of color, bronze radiance for deeper bronze skin tones, and deep is for deeper, richer skin tones. But remember, you don't need to match to your skin. You can always go up to have that boost in color. Well, remember, it's the only order of the year. What we have is what we have, and when it sells I out, need the boost in color. Until 2023, and the free shipping and handling on this goes up at the end of the day today. Nine dollars and twenty cents. If this was like, if this was a show where we were talking to you about like summer essentials, like, this is like the this is like totally essential to have because this is when we're showing the most skin on our arms, yeah. on our neck, on our décolleté, your legs. Oh my décolleté! All over your body and not have to worry yeah. about this transferring onto your clothes. Yeah. Um, we've got some models here on the set. I'd love for you guys to see. Look at the, the voltage is going like up as I adjust and it. I don't know, uh, Mackenzie. Tell us which shade Taylor's wearing. The Taylor, I believe, is in golden, correct? Okay. So are you in the yeah. Weird. So maybe if I adjust this one for a peak voltage, that would be the right alignment. Gorgeous it is. Now, oh, wow. Taylor is oh, wow. a wow. Model there, but is that not true? And look at how dark it is. So you can imagine if it can cover something that dark. 
Imagine what it will cover when you get this home. And she's changing Still, it. Still, it should be a hell of a lot louder. White dress, and it's not transferring onto the white dress. Now, what makes this different from anything you're seeing on the market? First of all, we were the first to make a product like this. My family even started the concept of. Yeah, it should be blaring loud. So it seems like if I adjust these alignment points for the maximum plate voltage, the plate voltage, the highest, seems to be the loudest and clearest with the least amount of buzz. A wedding, a shower, a holiday party. When you want to feel your best, this is what you want to wear. And it doesn't transfer onto your clothing, which... So, adjusting the 4.5 trap really seemed to bring it in the most. Especially for love, all um, that you're getting here. $75 for the bag alone, it, plus you also get the extra strap, and you get the initial... It's actually fairly loud now. Not as loud as I would expect it. I would expect it to, to distort. But, you know, the IF might be all out of alignment, too. Um until the end of the day the, the if is not passing the, the sound the brains and the beauty behind well let me get the remote and make is sure the converter right box is all the way up no, too i guess you're both so clean save a hundred dollars at soclean.com from the time you're born a gland in your brain produces youth hormone it's what makes you stay lean build strong muscles and feel energetic Unfortunately, around the age of 20, your body starts producing less youth hormone. And by the time you're in your 40s and 50s, it's much harder to stay energetic, lean, and build muscle. But what if there was a way to tell your body to get back to work and boost... It's actually hormone? acceptable Nutrients now. GH Boost uses an amino acid and botanical blend, clinically demonstrated to help your body boost its own youth hormone levels more than 100%. Except the buzzing, it's, it's acceptable. It was just alignment. Pretty much that's all it was. The, the final thing was aligning that 4.5 trap. I mean, yeah, I'm having to kind of yell to compete with it, so I think it's pretty damn good. And the other thing is I don't have the speakers hooked up correctly. I'm not sure how this thing connects the speakers when it's running through the uh, amplifier unit. Signing up only takes 90 seconds with no credit checks, no interest. Someone mentioned in the comments on the previous video that maybe this horizontal output tube that I was using was causing the poor vertical. I don't think so, and I don't remember when I changed back to the original tube because I used this as a sacrificial tube in case the something's wrong in the high voltage and it causes the tube to red plate and burn up. But let's switch back to this real quick and see if the vertical problem comes back. That would be very interesting. This is back to the 6AQ5 test setup and that was not the problem. I pulled the 6BQ6 out and put the 6AQ5 back in and the vertical is still working fine. So that was not the culprit but I do appreciate the comments and ideas I do read every comment and uh, look and think about everything that's said because I might just miss something I don't get everything right I make a hell of a lot of mistakes so I appreciate that uh, that would have been a great explanation but it, it's not the cause so I still think the transformer might have just been super saturated with water. I don't know how visible it is right now, but somebody axed in the previous video about the horizontal drive line, the, the brighter line right in the middle. And there's an adjustment for that. It's horizontal drive. And it's that little variable capacitor right in there. And that drive line can also be caused by a weak horizontal output tube, weak damper, bad capacitors. But there is an adjustment for it right there. And you just tweak that little screw until that drive line goes away. But you really do want to keep an eye on the cathode current. And why do I bring up cathode current so much? That was another question. Because cathode current is how much power is being driven through the tube, and a lot of these tubes are run right on edge. 
So if something's malfunctioning in the circuit and the cathode current's too high, it'll either shorten the life of the tube down to nothing or the tube will red plate and burn up and melt. Uh, you know, it can happen in a matter of minutes. So you always want to watch your cathode current on these kind of delicate power tubes. Uh, why am I using this adapter? Why did I make that adapter? Because this is an easy tube to melt down the horizontal output and I have about a hundred of those six AQ5s. That one that says good on it, I have like a whole box full of those. So I don't have a whole box full of the the 6BQ6. So if I 6BQ6, 6DQ6. So if I melt a couple of those down, I don't mind. The camera I started this video with died, so I had to change cameras. So if, it seems a little different. But anyway, here's what the Olympic looks like now. Uh, getting the sound louder was alignment, and the vertical issue is kind of unknown. I suspect that we might have had a uh, damp transformer, I don't know, but this is what it looks like now, and this is with the original 6CM7 that we know one side of is weak. So the vertical's a little bit overexpanded. Uh, that's okay. As long as the decollete is not flapping in the wind. This is what it should look like. All right, let's get some. Uh, let's get it hooked up to the digital converter box. I went from 150 to 175 in just three months. All in all, I gained 53 pounds, and I'm super pumped. I look and feel super better. Super pumped. Gain the weight you want, or your money back, guaranteed. Order today, and we'll include the exclusive weight gain guidebook. A $19.99 value, free. Call now, and we'll also upgrade your order to rush processing. A $6.99 value, absolutely free. That's right. Save over $25 when you call or visit CB1. WeightGainer.com now. Go to Bank, the ultimate banking app and debit card. Your go-to for exclusive perks like overdraft protection. Get paid up to two days early and no monthly fees with direct deposit. Open an account at GoToBank.com. Kevin paid off over twelve thousand dollars in credit cards. Thing needs an alignment really bad. The IF is way off. Lowered his payment so he could pay off his debt fast. Call 800 596 for a free consultation. Oh, not now. Oh, yeah, dude, that doesn't look good. I know what you do. What's that? I'm going to CastNetUSA.com. I can apply in minutes, and if approved, I can have the money as soon as the same business day. Oh, nice save. <laughs> Saving the day is easy. CastNetUSA. When you need money fast, be the hero. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need now. We got a horizontal drive line. Yeah, we welcome you back anytime you want to. Could probably adjust so that. We'll you this. this is our bonus buy we were just talking about. That price is only if you're picking it up tonight and you're not getting the today special. Because if you're getting. But it's all under a pound, and that's the key. That. I notice it's starting to develop hum, like the filters are starting to go open. JSA is the largest oh, yeah. organization in the country. We are completely student-led. We have student leaders at every level. Hi, I'm Kira Pender. I am the Southern California Junior State of America Governor. A large amount of Americans did vote in the 2020 election, but it's still so little compared to... I flipped the uh, local DX switch. It's a full house with Happy Days and Matt. Oh, rats. Will you look at that? This must be my lucky night, Aries. And no.
They send in tray after tray after tray. It is so cool that you can take this anywhere. You could bring this outdoors to the backyard. You could put it by the pool. You could bring it on the boat. You could keep it on the boat. You could bring it into an RV. Bring it to a park if you're having an afternoon party. Nobody's going to have enough ice to last, you know, an afternoon of, you know, being together with family and friends. This will pump out the ice on an ongoing basis until you need to add more water, and then it just does it all over again. So a way to always have fresh, clean tasting ice that actually can be clean because you know what kind of water you're putting in there. Uh, Deb Byers is joining us to talk about this incredible product. I have Does that thing actually have like a compressor in it and the whole the improvements ice maker refrigeration ago. thing? It would have to. Uh, good morning to you. Good Hi. morning to you, Callie. And you are absolutely right. This is the top of the line because this gorgeous ice maker is the 40 pound ice maker every 15 minutes it's going to drop 24 ice cubes into the tray and in a 24 hour period it will make 40 pounds of ice it is absolutely amazing and it's not just 40 pounds of ice it is 40 pounds of restaurant quality ice in these beautiful cubes that will fit into all the little vessels you know we all drink those little bottles that are small now with a little net. we need troy mcclure hosting this infomercial when you get this home, you're simply going to take the up scoop all the picks up like two cubes. In, fill it with water, no special lines, no special drains, no special anything. Isomatic made. The isomatic machines worked like that. Where they ran the water over the evaporator. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Uh, I mean, it could be better, of course, but it's definitely pretty good. They work now. He recommends Good Feet to anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. So get moving. Come in for your. A lot of noise in the audio. Okay, all right. Pero aguarda. Desde lo mágico hasta lo jurásico. Foreign language. Stars, you are never lost or alone, but with. Okay, I'm happy with this. Need or desire to pray. The last thing you want to do is to turn that off, get busy, do something else because what you're doing is you are Notice how the drive line distorts his face. Very simple. Quench not the spirit. Watch how the drive line distorts his face. Don't stifle and strangle the spirit's voice in your life. So when you sense a need, there's an adjustment for that. It has the four major basilicas of Rome. I was in Oh, yes! Gliding in at number two. It's the glow lantern. Something a bit different for fireworks night. We got debris in here. Good. All right, that's it. 